Okay, now final cause example, we can see here are quite a few parameters in this one. So we are going to take our systematic approach and you'll see it's very, very simple. First of all, finding our center, we make whatever is inside the trig function equal to zero. In this case, we've got negative x equal to zero, which just means x is equal to zero. When x is equal to zero, we get negative zero is just zero. Cos of zero is equal to one so then we get negative two times one so we're trying to find out what is the y value if x is equal to zero um, it's negative two times one minus two point five which equals negative four comma five so my starting point is zero and negative four and a half okay so there's zero negative four and a half is down here okay that's my starting point my center line is negative two and a half. That's my center line. So at negative two and a half there. Goes my center line. And now on my center line, I must mark off my period. Period being 360 divided by the positive part of the coefficient of x, which we use P. Okay, so in this case it's negative one. Now we want the absolute value called um, or the positive part, which is one. So 360 degrees divided by one is just 360 degrees. Now the reason why we wanted to do that is because we want to divide the period into four pieces, uh, which means it's going to be where I start, where I reach my center, where I reach my maximum, where I reach my center, where I reach my minimum. Okay, so that's why I need four pieces. So to divide all of this by four gives me 90 degrees. So every 90 degrees will be another point. So starting here, 90 degrees in this direction will take me there. It's in the positive direction. 90 degrees in the negative direction will take me to negative 90 negative 180, negative 270, negative 360, somewhere there. Okay, now um, the next is my amplitude. I must mark off my amplitude or bound my graph with my amplitude. Okay, and my amplitude is how high I go above my x, uh, sorry, my center line. And that is given by the positive part that is multiplying the cos. So that is 2. Okay, so I go 2 units above my center line, which means I'm going up to a half. Okay, from 2 and a half, negative 2 and a half, up to a half, 2 units up, and 2 units down, which is at negative 4 and a half. So there are my boundaries. My graph may not exceed those boundaries. Now, from starting from this position, I must now reach my center line at these two points. Okay, let's change color again. S starting there, let's reach my center line at these points. Then at that point, I must reach my maximum. Here I would reach another maximum, but I don't need to draw that part. Then I go back to my center line, back to my center line on the other side, and then here back to my minimum. Okay, so here we can see that because of the negative, this graph, I used to start above my center line. Now I'm starting below my center line. So it's still not that difficult. So here I'm going to go make uh, draw lines. Again, remember no sharp points. Okay, in the trig functions, draw nice lines through all of those coordinates. And that's it. That's as difficult as this will get. Well, see you in the next video where next up we're looking at the tan function.